The March 13, 2012 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature will now come to order. Will the clerk please call the roll? President Adair is excused. Mr. Ancello. Ms. Andrews is excused. Mr. Antelli? Here. Mr. Barker? Here. Mr. Baroth? Here. Ms. Boyce? Here. Mr. Colby? Here. Mr. Daniele? Here. Mrs. Draw? Here. Mr. Esposito? Here. Mr. Gamble? Here. Mr. Gamina? Here. Mr. Haney? Here. Mr. Hanna? Here. Mr. Holland? Here. Ms. Cayley? Mr. John Lightfoot, Here. Mr. Willie Lightfoot, Here. Mr. McCann, Here. Mr. Michike, Here. Mr. O'Brien, Mr. Patterson, Here. Dr. Quattro, Here. Mr. Rocco, Here. Mr. Tucciarello, Here. Mrs. Valerio, Here. Mr. Wilcox, Here. Mr. Yolovich. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Please stay seated. I would like to introduce Pastor Duke Hamlin of Church on the Ridge, who has been invi invited tonight by Legislator Fred Ancello. Pastor Hamlin. Thankful for this opportunity to lead this uh, session in prayer. And if you bow with me, uh, we'll pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day, this beautiful day that you have given to us. Thank you for our lives, for the gift of life, for this country that we live in, with the freedoms that we have. Also pray, Lord, uh, tonight for this session. I pray for this uh, body of legislators and citizens that are here to express and to listen to one another for the good of this community. I pray that you will guide the discussions that are held. I pray that ears will be open, honesty will be voiced, uh, Lord, that discussions and persons will be honored and uh, issues and convictions expressed with respect. I pray, Lord, that as uh, decisions are made, that minds will be focused on the people of the community, that the people of the community will understand the responsibility of the legislators and understand as they come together to make the decision for the common good. Lord, we pray that uh, the motivation will be for service and the service uh, that um, achieves your will in this country and achieves um, what is best for the common good. I pray this as a part of the community in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Hamlin. On behalf of the legislature, thank you for coming in. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Legislator Dick Yolovich, say it for us tonight. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You have all received your copy of the Journal of Day 3, February 14th, 2012. Without exception, the journal stands approved as submitted. There is a hearing loop in place tonight to assist those who are hearing impaired. Anyone requesting assistance should inquire in the clerk's office. If you have a cellular phone, pager, or other electronic device in your possession, we would request that you silence them for the duration of the meeting. And we thank you for your cooperation. Legislators, the referral submitted to the legislature for the next committee cycle are in your folders. And at this time, I would like to introduce Mark Quinn of the Monroe County Parks Department, who will tell us about the plant of the month. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Hi, thank you. Coming soon to a garden or woodland near you, uh, spring. Uh, one of my favorite signs of spring is the narcissus or daffodil. Um, interestingly, we think of them mostly as these yellow ones up here. There's actually about 25,000 registered cultivars of daffodils. Um, you probably won't hardly tell the difference from one to the next. Most of them are whites and yellows. We have some uh, pinks, uh, kind of some greens. Uh, there's a lot of interesting stuff with daffodils, but what we like about them is they're particularly hardy. They, uh, they do well without a lot of care if they're planted in the right spot. Uh, they're a perennial. They come up year after year. Personally, 
I like to plant them out in wood, wood edges because they'll do particularly well under deciduous trees. So you, in the early spring, they'll pop up in the woodland and really look nice. We also have quite a few where we actually plant them in lawns. That causes us a little bit of an issue because if, after they bloom, you have to leave the leaves on them until they start to brown out, which typically can be up to about June. So what happens then is it looks like we haven't mowed the grass in some of the areas of these uh, daffodils, uh, which, eh, it, it's good in certain areas, but in, in your front lawn might not be so, so good, maybe best in the wood, wood edge or in, the, in your garden. Um, they like a well-drained soil. They don't do particularly well if you put them in a, in a wetter area. Uh, they don't, again, require much care. It's a good idea to divide them like every five to ten years. Um, they're not native, but they naturalize extremely well. And the other thing we like a lot about them is the animals don't bother them. The deer will not eat these. You put tulips out, they think it's candy. You put daffodils out, they'll, stit, they'll be there forever. Um, so good luck with your daffodils. They'll probably be booming in about a week with this weather, and they they're, uh, should, should look good. First great sign of spring. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. There will be a quiz afterwards. <laughs> Mr. Haney has told me he can ace it. This evening we have one proclamation scheduled. Mr. Grant? Would Gary Smith please come forward? Also Vice President Michael Barker and Legislator Willie Joe Lightfoot. Whereas the Pirate Toy Fund is a nonprofit founded in 1995 by local entertainer Gary Smith, best known as Gary the Happy Pirate, whose sole mission is to collect, sort, and provide new toys to children in need in a 10-county area in western New York all, around, all year round. And whereas, since moving into their current location at 15, or 1453 East Main Street, the Pirate Toy Fund has collected and distributed over 200,000 toys. Gary was inspired by Christy Simonetti, a patient at Strong Memorial Hospital, to use his talents and generosity to bring smiles to those brave children. And whereas the Pirate Toy Fund serves many children, but primarily dedicates itself to social service and human service programs that address medical, domestic violence, and financial need situations. In 2009, they established TikTok, or Toys Inspiring Children to Overcome Challenges a project that provides specialized adaptive toys to children with disabilities. Since these expensive toys are rarely donated, the Pirate Toy Fund raises money to purchase the specially selected toys that will help a child improve his or her social, physical, and emotional disabilities. And whereas since 2006, the Pirate Toy Fund has provided toys for every Cut the Violence event provided over 1,000 toys in all. In 2009 alone, Gary and his crew of volunteers, <clears throat> his two part-time assistants, and their board of directors handed out over 24,000 toys to children locally. Through their more than 70 sanctioned program partners, the Pirate Toy Fund's dedication and hard work has brought and will continue to bring smiles, laughter, and joy to children across the greater Rochester community. Now, therefore, let it be known that we, Jeffrey R. Dare, President, and Willie Joe Lightfoot, Assistant Min Minority Leader, on behalf of the min entire Monroe County Legislature, do hereby honor Gary Smith, the Pirate Toy Fund, for more than 15 years of dedication, service, bringing aid and comfort to children in need in the Rochester community. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. On behalf of the Toy Fund, we really appreciate it. And our goal is to get to a million toys by the time I'm gone. So um, we appreciate all of you and what you've done for us and your support. Thank you. Have a great day. We will now hold the public forum. We have several people registered to address the legislature. Madam Clerk. If you require assistance, a deputy will assist you in approaching the lectern. Please come forward and be prepared to address the legislature when your name is called. 
Each speaker will have two minutes, and we ask that you conclude your remarks when the timer sounds. And we thank you for your cooperation. Our first speaker is Gary Ortolani. Please come forward. Good evening. I am Gary Ortolani, a lifelong resident of Monroe County and an employee of Monroe County for 31 years. I worked 18 years in juvenile detention and I am currently a probation officer su supervising a caseload of sex offenders. I'm here tonight to address the issue of our unresolved contract between the county and CSEA. Probation officers petitioned to break away from CSEA in order to differentiate, uh, differentiate us from the other units within CSEA so we can negotiate a contract more on par with the sheriffs and court deputies. After an extremely lengthy wait, which we realized delayed negotiations, we ultimately lost our bid to break away, as in that ruling we were described as being, quote, quasi-law enforcement. I take exception with that depiction. Probation officers are New York State peace officers and as such are trained to carry and use defensive repellent, expandable batons and firearms. Under Article 35 of the New York State Penal Law, we are authorized to use physical force and or deadly physical force if appropriate or necessary. We work alongside all law enforcement agencies within the county as well as at the federal and state levels. Our warrant unit makes arrests and our search unit confiscates child pornography, drugs, and takes weapons off the streets of Monroe County. Probation officers are in the field daily conducting home visits on the almost 7,000 probationers we supervise. Be assured we are not quasi-law enforcement. Some officers chose to retire early in order to retain the medical benefits under our current contract rather than wait and leave with the plan that is being offered to us. Also, we have seen a few officers leave for other probation departments in nearby counties and are now making as much as $10,000 a year for the same job and position they were doing here. We are, all aware, we are all aware that some individuals within the administration received substantial pay increases. Also, without a contract, the county saved money simply due to no increase in our wages over the past three years. I am not asking for a $10,000 raise, only for a contract that reflects our value and our worth as county employees. All workers within CSEA come to work daily to make Monroe County a decent place to live. It is time for personal biases and political affiliations to be put aside. After more than three years, it is time that we have a contract that compensates us fairly. I'm here to simply ask for your help and for someone to advocate for us to bring about a fair contract. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cynthia Hopkins Bliss. Cynthia? Good evening. I too am a probation officer with the county. I've been with the county for 15 years. I'd like to s stop for a moment and um, thank everybody for allowing me the opportunity to speak. Uh, Mr. Ordolani, Officer Ordolani said uh, very eloquently some of the things that I was gonna say. So, that I, so I'm gonna kind of pick out of uh, uh, and leave out some of the things that he's already um, stated to you tonight. Um, again, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to speak, uh, beginning with the secretary who signed me up, because without um, all of us, the county would not work as efficiently as it does. I'd like to speak personally as a single mom of a daughter who, until last year, was in private school. Without a contract, um, there are a number of things in this economy that we have uh, suffered or had to go without. And I'd like to, again, ask the legislator to sit down and just have a, a fair contract with us to sit and negotiate. And I'm not sure if the legislator is aware that we, as a probation department, did attempt to um, leave our particular unit, uh, bargaining unit, and ask for another one. However, after a long process, as Mr. Ordolani Mr. Ordolani uh, indicated it was uh, denied to us. 
And during that period, there were a couple of contracts that we were not able to vote on. Um, here we are four years later, four years in an economy that has seen terrible uh, economic times. Um, we just a couple days ago got uh, a statement from the county legislator who indicated that she's very impressed with how we work together with other law enforcement agencies and uh, continue to support what we do. I ask that you continue to support what we do and give us a fair contract. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Latonia Wilcox. Good evening to our um, honorable county executive, the legislators, um, our commissioner at the Department of Human Services, um, Ms. Reed, my name is Latanya Wilcox, and I'm an examiner on the financial care path providers for the Department of Human Services. I've been a county employee for 10 years. Um, five years I served at Monroe County um, Jail and Correctional Facility as a law clerk. And um, November I will be employed by the Department of Human Services for six years. I work for the heart of DHS in the emergency housing unit. My current duties entail processing clients for Shelter Plus Care, Jennifer and Nielsen Houses, and emergency assistance for adults with um, Supplemental Security Income, SSI. I maintain a caseload of 460 clients for Shelter Plus alone. I process between three to eight um, EAA, Emergency Assistance for Adult, SSI, cases daily and provide updates on placements for transitional um, housing for individuals coming out of incarceration. In addition, I have scheduled time that's um, required and allotted for my unit for homeless placement, for emergency placement. The demographic of my clients range from individuals who suffer from mental and physical disabilities, um, substance abuse, and are coming out of incarceration. About 99% of my interaction with these clients are face-to-face. -face. Our interview space is a common shared area that has potential to compromise my health and safety. At one point, I was required to go to house inspections and I was exposed to mold, which caused me to have a respiratory infection for about three months. I have since recovered, my health is okay. Now I'm still subject to infections from clients who come in or from my coworkers who go to homeless shelters and come back and um, sit in their office. I'm a dedicated worker. I work hard and my record reflects it. I have a good professional working relationship with my administrators, um, my supervisors, everyone. Last year I received the Thomas Richards Awards for the work that I did for Shelter Plus Care. Three years without a contract is unfair, not cool, ain't right. At this point, there's no justification or rationale for how the frontline workers have no fair new contract raises. Yet there's been steady raises for our legislators, our human resource directors, our commissioner, our administrators. Even our clients got raises that we don't get. They got better benefits that we don't have. Um, and it's funny because we're the ones who help them get those benefits. So I'm gonna conclude. When I began working for the Department of Human Services, I came at the aftermath of um, some restructuring that had occurred and the morale of my coworkers was down. My resolve was not to be that way and get caught up in the negativity and embrace the stand where trust and honesty and respect are the norm, where open communication prevails, that empowers employees and clients to succeed. We take ownership of our individuals and our cooperative action, and we take pride in the job well done. This is what you demand from your employees every day. Tomorrow morning, I will go to work and I will still have a good disposition and I will work hard for my clients and with my coworkers. I respectfully request that you be fair and allow us not to go four years without a fair contract. Mr. Lightfoot, I live in your district, and I'm a registered voter. I vote. I hope that you will advocate on our behalf. Thank you for your consideration. Our next speaker is Jimmy Gradford.
Excuse me, Judy. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> My name is Judy Gradford, and I'm a 20-year member of the Monroe County Federation of Social Workers and a child protective caseworker. I love my job and the families that I serve. I love that my labor and the labor of my fellow county workers actually make a difference for children, families, the elderly, and everyday ordinary citizens of this community. But I and my coworkers have not felt the love from this county for the difficult and often dangerous jobs that we do every day. For the last three years, we have seen our base wages shrink as the cost of living rises. I'm here today to deliver a message from our community. This is part of our message. They support us to the tune of over 1,200 signatures at strong and counting. Our community understands that an injury to one is an injury to all. They get that working people have to stand together if our way of life is to survive. So I'm asking you, the Monroe County Legislature, to heed their voices on our behalf and help us to settle our contract with a deal that is fair for workers. And I'd like to share the last verse of a little song that we, that we sang outside. This county works because of us. We work hard every day, sir. All we ask is some respect, good health care, and fair pay, sir. Give county workers a fair deal. That's all we are saying. We need fair wages and health care, and for this we are waiting. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chris Safudo. And there's more in the back room. Chris? <laughs> if I sang you would all stampede out of here. <laughs> I do want to thank you though for having flowers that match my shirt. <laughs> Good evening everybody. Um, I've been coming here for about three and a half years telling you that the hardworking men and women of this county deserve a fair contract for the work they do. I've told you how unfair it is that the M&Ps received a nice 2.5 raise for the last three years. I've told you that there are a chosen few who received upgrades f for work that, they, that far exceeds what they do for what they do. I've reminded you of the snow getting plowed, the grass getting cut, the probationers getting supervised, the community staying healthy, the patients being cared for, and the community at large getting services at the county clerk's office. However, there is one thing I haven't asked, and that is how it would be in your household if you didn't get a raise for three years. Would your family be willing to sacrifice? Would you be willing to work a second or maybe a third job. How about cutting back on groceries or perhaps not even sending your children to college? There are, those are the things that happen when people don't get raises for over three years. As we sit and watch all these wonderful proclamations to people that really deserve them, um, I, the, and you hand them out each month, I have a challenge for you. How about proclaiming that as elected officials who represent us, back there, the taxpayers, you commit to encouraging the county executive and her agents to come to the table and negotiate a fair contract. For as you know, Monroe County works because we do. Have a good evening. Our next speaker is Max Kessler. Good evening. Last year I ran for a seat in this body as a libertarian. One of my major issues was restoring the right of innocent people to defend themselves against violent criminals in our county parks. 
While I came nowhere near winning, my vote percentage was consistent with Republican plus conservative enrollment in my district. This suggests that Republican and conservative parties voters oppose the victim disarmament zones created by the prohibition of carrying firearms in parks and other places. If you want to learn more about the dangers of victim disarmament zones, just do a web search for the term school shootings. You'll find out just how much criminals love victim disarmament zones. Republicans in this body have spent years promising to restore the Second Amendment. Pro-gun voters elected and re-elected them. Then the Republican politicians backed down. Pro-gun voters forgave them this time and re-elected them on the promise that it wouldn't happen again. Given another chance to restore county parks to the realm of America, the Republican politicians backed down again. And the pro-gun voters forgave them again. And the cycle continued. This parallels another major problem in our society, domestic violence. Republican politicians keep acting like wife beaters because pro-gun voters keep acting like battered women. In both cases, the abused people need to say no more. Battered women need to stop forgiving their abusers and pro-gun voters need to stop forgiving anti-gun Republican politicians. In four years, the Libertarian Party will be prepared to run pro-gun candidates in districts with Republican incumbents. If that means Democrats win, so be it. At least they're honest about their tyranny. Thank you. Our next speaker is Chris Edis. Hello, my name is Chris Eads. Some of you may know that I am the Monroe County Chairman for SCOPE, the Shooters Committee on Political Education. And today I'd like to ask you to make a modification in the law banning uh, the carrying of guns in county parks. Uh, while it may have been well-intentioned, the flaw is the concealed carry permit system. Um, permit holders in New York State are among some of the most law-abiding citizens that can be found anywhere. They go through every kind of imaginable background check. And it makes no sense that they cannot carry concealed in the county parks. This is a great inconvenience to concealed carry permit holders who cannot pass through a park like everybody else. And I urge you to repeal this ban. Thank you. Our last speaker is Thomas Gregory. I just want to speak to the report of a draft, a final draft uh, that was given to you. Bottom line is, uh, doing that report, I uh, found myself at the end of December opposed or at least concerned uh, about the raise that was given uh, to our sheriff. And one of the things I enjoyed about doing that report was it gave me an opportunity to wash away my own ignorance and realize just how good of a sheriff we have for pretty much a bargain based on price. Uh, I think the conclusion pretty much says that he deserves a lot more than he's getting. I would say the same thing goes for our county executive and particularly our county clerk. Uh, I think uh, we should be looking at the, our executive, what we're paying our executives. I want to point out that our executive, uh, in these particular executive agencies, uh, these are revenue-making agencies for the county. And when you start looking at the type of uh, what they, the revenues they bring in to our particular county and realize how much how much they bring in compared to how little we pay them, I think that the increase in their wages would be justified. I'd like to just step off for a second and respond. I, I'm a union member. I was an iron worker for 35 years with Local 33, and I've listened to the union people speak for a long time. I remember back in 1974, I think it was, when uh, my generation of iron workers at that time, uh, we stepped back and actually we gave a uh, uh, we mortgage, uh, amortized our uh, pension. We could have had a lot, a lot of money, 
uh, we stepped back and we made sure that the old people who brought our union into fruition and kept it healthy received a pension. We paid for their pension and we never looked back. We know there was not a man in my generation who's ever felt bad about being a union man and giving something up. And I remember when we were working on pre-engineered buildings and they were coming in here and we sat back in our union meetings and we said, well, guess what? We're going to work at 75% of our union scale. See, unions aren't, in my opinion, in my experience, aren't always for getting more. Sometimes as a group of, collective group of individuals, they look at what they need to do at a time for maybe the rest of society. Obviously, if this was a rich county like it was a long time ago and had the revenues it had a long time ago, I don't think we'd have a lot of yellow shirt people here today. Your union they would have had a contract. But I think we have to look at you know what you can do to help the county out and maybe taking the contract or sitting down honestly and forthrightly with the administration and come to an agreement because it takes two sides to make an agreement. I've been there. And uh, bottom line is, how about helping out and seeing what you can do? Thank you very much. This concludes the public forum. At this time, we will recess the March 13, 2012 meeting of the Monroe County Legislature for the purpose of convening the Pure Waters Administrative Board for the Rochester Pure Waters, Irondequoit Bay, South Central, Northwest Quadrant, and Gates, Chile, Ogden Sewer Districts. The clerk will please note the attendance and read the item on the agenda. PWAB 1, referral 12-79, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. This is a motion to adopt. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB 2, referral 12-81, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB number three, referral 12-83, authorizing an increase in improvement. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB four, referral 12-85, Seconded by Legislator, uh, moved. moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB 5, referral 12-87. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB 6, referral 12-89. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor? Any opposed? Next item, please. PWAB 7, referral 12-91, authorizing an increase in Moved improvement. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. PWAB 8, referral 12-93. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. PWAB 9, referral 12-95, authorizing an increase. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. PWAB 10, referral 12-97. Moved by Legislator Holland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. We will now recess the Rochester Pure Waters, Irondequoit Bay South Central, Northwest Quadrant, and Gates, Chile, Ogden Sewer Districts, and adjourn the Pure Waters Administrative Board. The March 13, 2012 meeting of the legislature is convened. We will continue with consideration of motions, resolutions, and notices. Will the clerk please read the next item on the agenda? Madam Clerk. Madam Clerk, if I will, I'd like to uh, take items 17 and 17 through 46 and move them. All right. Items 17 through 46 have been moved by Legislator Daniele, seconded by Legislator O'Brien. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Those items carry. Back to item one on the agenda. 
Item number one, referral 12 dash. Moved by Legislator Boyce, second by Legislator McCann. Any questions, any discussion on item one? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number two, referral 12 dash 63, authorizing initiation. Moved by Legislator Rocco, second by Legislator Howland. Any questions on item number two? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Item number three, referral 12 dash 64, accepting grant. Moved by Mr. Rocco, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number four, referral 12-65, accepting grant from... Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number five, referral 12-66, approving public employees. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number six, referral 12-67, authorizing annual contribution. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number seven, referral 12-68, accepting. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number eight, referral 12-69, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Rocco, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on this item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number nine, referral 12-70, appointment. Moved by Legislator Boyce, seconded by Legislator McCann. Any questions on this? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 10, referral 12-71, authorizing. Moved by Legislator Yolovich, seconded by Mr. Gamina. Any questions on this? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 11, referral 12-72, accepting grant. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Next item. Item number 12, referral 12-73, accepting grant. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 13, referral 12-74. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Motion, oh, any, any nays, any opposed? Motion carries. Next item, please. Item number 14, referral 12-75, authorizing. Thank you, Mr. Colby. Moved by Mr. Colby, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Any questions on this? All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 15, referral 12-76. Moved by Mr. Colby, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Questions on this, Mr. Barat? Thank you, Mr. Vice President. Not a question of disclosure that I am employed by RIT. Thank you. Any other discussion on this matter? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Item number 16, referral 12-77, accepting grant. Moved by Mr. Colby, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Any questions on this matter? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 47, referral 12-98, authorizing. Moved by Mr. Gamina, seconded by Mr. Hanna and Mr. Yolovich. Any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 
Item carries. Next item, please. Item number 48, referral 12-99, accepting gift. Moved by Mr. Hanna, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Any questions? Mr. Haney. Thank you, Ms. Mr. President, Vice President. The, I would just like someone from the Sheriff's Office to reaffirm before this body that no one except medical professionals will be allowed access into this database. Uh, joining the Rio database is certainly good, uh, but it also has the potential for evil if the wrong people get into the database for the wrong reasons. And I would just like before this honorable body, someone from the Sheriff's Office to repeat their assertion that no one but medical professionals in the process of rendering health care to inmates will have access to this database. the Vice President, I am Jen Summers, Counsel to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. The access that is given through this program is role-based access. It will be medical providers, other people um, working with an inmate uh, for the provision of medical care will, will be the only people uh, granted access to the medical records. And again, the inmate will have to um, sign various uh, HIPAA compliant releases in order to get to that stage. Does, does that answer your question? Through you, Mr. Vice President, could you tell me, give me some idea who these other people are other than the medical providers who will have access? I'm sorry, I guess what I should have said is other than doctors. We have, you know, nurses, um, psychiatric nurses, doctors. So um, the only people who will have access are medical providers? Yes, individuals working okay. with the inmates medical care. Yes. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Item number 49, referral 12-100. Moved by Mr. Holland, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Any questions on the item? Seeing none. Oh, for introductory purposes only. Next item. Item number 50, referral 12-100, providing. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. This is a tabling motion. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Item number 51, referral 12-100. Moved by Legislator Howland, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. This is to set the public hearing. All in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 52, referral 12-101, accepting grant from New York State. Moved by Legislator Valerio, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. Do we have any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 53, referral 12-102, authorizing Moved by Legislator Quattro, seconded by Legislator Yolovich and Legislator Colby. Any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Item number 54, referral 12-102. Mr. Colby. Moved by Mr. Colby, seconded by Mr. Yolovich. Do we have any questions on the item? Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Next item, please. Item number 55, referral 12-103, amending resolution 25 of 2012 to authorize. Moved by Legislator Draw, seconded by Legislator Yolovich. All in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed? Item carries. Is there any unfinished business to come before this honorable body this evening? Seeing none, 
Mr. Daniele. Mr. Vice President, I move this honorable body stand adjourned until 6 p.m. Tuesday, April 17th, 2012. Thank you.